Hello friends, welcome back to Mains Answer Writing Basics program being conducted by Team India for IAS. This is Manjunath Murod. In this video, we are going to discuss about Day 24, answer approach to the Day 24 question. So the subject for Day 24 is essay and the topic is Indian Constitution. Indian Constitution. So Day 24 na topic bandhu Bharatada Samhidhan agi so, Bartha the Samidana, the Indian Constitution, the essay topic, Kotre, Yauriti Baribodu, another Nanao, Ega Vishlation Madonna. So, Indian Constitution, Mele Nagro, questions Bandre, essay topics Bandre, so the case separate our preparation Beka Vodilla. So, whatever we prepared for GS2, that is more than enough to write the a well essay on Indian Constitution. So, this essay topic, it is very important for upcoming UPSC means 2024 and also upcoming KS means 2024. So, here do exams are important. So, from the last uh, 4 to 5 years, UPSC has not asked essay on Indian Constitution. Earlier, every alternate year it used to ask. Nowadays, it is not asking. So, there is a high probability that this year or the next year, the UPSC may ask question on Indian Constitution, an essay on Indian Constitution. KPSC in the previous case means it asked an essay on National Education Policy 2020. So this year it may ask question on Indian Constitution. So for both the exams, this topic, this essay topic is very important. Constitution is the fundamental law of the land and embodies the aspirations and ideals of the people. So this is the topic of the essay. So essay topic is the parts. The first part is the constitution is the fundamental law of the land. The second part is it embodies the aspirations and ideals of the people of India. So now we are going to part and address more with different perspective with dimensions. So we are going to address more with other. So this essay will be one approach to discuss. The content will be same. New, very, very rithi. Same content na use maadu kondu. Very rithi atwa very approach alli. Essay na bari bohudu. Coming to the approach to the above essay topic. So we have to begin the essay by writing an introduction. So introduction alli in bari bohudu. The easiest way of writing introduction is defining the constitution. Constitution and reina ta define maadu. So its role as a supreme law of land and the explain model do. and highlighting its importance in shaping the governance, legal framework and societal norms of a country. So bardu, now introduce more bodu. So in in bari bodu introduction alantandre. So definition of the constitution, then explaining how it is supreme law of the land, supreme law of the land. Then we have to explain or highlight its importance in governance, governance, then legal framework, how constitution works as a legal framework for all laws and policies in India, then how it shapes the societal norms, societal norms, this we should write. Or else, alternatively, we can begin the introduction by writing its significance like uh, how Indian constitution formed after independence, how Indian constitution formed after independence, then emphasizing its role in post-independence transition. So, independence ad mele, post-independence ad mele, transition to Indian society from colonial rule colonial rule to self governance self governance transition so this can be an alternative introduction so either one we should write as an introduction or else we should choose writing any one as an introduction and the second one should be followed as an explanation so first of definition of constitution bardu constitution significance barita hogodu or else Constitution significance na introduction al barudu. Then we should delve into the definition of the constitution, its importance in governance, legal framework, societal norms. Anta heli explain martha. Aar itinu na oise na continue mar bodu. So after writing introduction, we should transition to the main content. 
So in the main content, we should address the following dimensions. So here I am going to discuss the dimensions that we should write in the essay. So you can use whatever content we are discussing here and you can use those, that content and you can structure in your own way. There is no need to follow the same structure. You can come up with your own structure. Also, you can add your own content to the whatever in addition to whatever we are discussing now. So you can enhance the essay and there is no need to follow the same flow that I am going to discuss. You can come up with your own flow. You can restructure it properly so that it should not miss. It should look the flow should be logical and organic and there should not be any patchy work. The examiner, if he reads, he shouldn't feel that the evaluator should not feel that the essay is a patchy work. There should be a continuous flow, continuity between paras, then continuity within para. So that you should ensure largely the content will be whatever I'm going to discuss. You can use the same content. Then you write the essay and you get it evaluated by your mentors. So let's start. First, we will address the historical context and aspirations of the freedom fighters. So historical context only. First now, colonial legacy na varita What is colonial legacy? So British uh, British rule idaga, British Raj, or British rule idaga. India dali yau riti rakte. What is the what was the state of affairs? So what was a state of justice? What was the state uh, state of equality? What was the state of liberty for all Indians? So yau riti Indians paristiti rakte. Adana now explain martha ho beko. Then we should transition to the aspirations of the freedom fighters. So during freedom struggle, what was the aspiration of the freedom fighters? What they envisioned for an independent India? So they envisioned democratic, democratic, secular, secular and inclusive India. So this was the aspiration of the freedom fighters. Like Mahatma Gandhi, Ambedkar, Nehru, Sardar Vallabhai Patel, Bhagat Singh and Subhash Chandra Bose. So it was their aspirations to have a democratic, secular and inclusive India for all sections of society. So that we should write. Then we should start begin writing or we should transition to the drafting process of the Indian constitution. So Indian constitution drafting process, how did it start? I do. So what was the schemes or plans behind this then how indian constitution assembly formed then how what were the committees that were responsible for drafting the indian constitution that we should explain so after explaining this historical context and aspirations to have a democratic social secular independent india we should transition to the fundamental laws and principles that are enshrined in the indian constitution we should begin writing about the features of the Indian constitution. So that comes under next part. So the second part is we should write the fundamental laws and principles that are enshrined in the Indian constitution. So here we should talk about preamble, what the preamble is. So what it reflects, what values or aspirations it reflects like justice, liberty, equality and fraternity. So how it sets the tone for the constitution that we should write. So after writing about the preamble, then we should transition to the second fundamental law or principle that enshrined in the constitution that is fundamental rights. So we should explain what is what are fundamental rights, why they are important, the role in role of fundamental rights in protecting the citizens and weaker sections of society and the role of judiciary in protecting the fundamental rights that we should address. So after writing about fundamental rights, we should transition to the directive principles of state policy, its importance in achieving welfare state. This we should write. So welfare state are well, fundamental, sorry, directive principles of state policy, role in it. So then now Barita Hobbeku. So how this direct DPSP, they are important in empowering women, their role in empowering weaker section of society. So that we should explain. So after writing about laws and principles, now we should transition to the structure and functioning of the government. So coming to structure and functioning. So after writing laws and principles, so now we have to focus on structure and functioning of the government. So this reflect this largely reflects the governance aspect. 
So in the governance aspect, first we should address the federal structure of the constitution. So here we should examine the federal structure of the Indian constitution. So unitary features, federal features, then when why there is a bias towards the unitary feature in the Indian constitution. Then we should balance the powers between central and state governments. So reflecting the need for unity and diversity that we should write. So after writing federal structure, then we should write or we should talk about the separation of powers. What is separation of powers? Why it is important? So among the legislatures, executive and judiciary, in order to ensure separation of powers, what are the checks and balances are there? So how this avoids the concentration of power and how it protects the democratic principles that we should write. So after writing separation of powers and the detailed provisions that are there in the constitution with respect to separation of powers, then we should talk about the independent judiciary. So why there should be a judiciary which should be independent. So its importance in upholding the constitution, protecting the fundamental rights and interpreting the laws in the light of constitutional values. So this we should write uh, along with famous judgments. So here we should write famous judgments like Keshavananda Bharti case, Minerva Mills case, case Puttaswami case. So by using all those judgments and examples, we should narrate the, we should address these dimensions. So in federal structure, with respect to cooperative, we should also write cooperative federalism, the need for cooperative federalism and the role of Niti Ayoga, Niti Ayoga and the role of GST Council, how it is promoting, how these are promoting federal uh, cooperative federalism that we should write. So writing contemporary examples, contemporary Supreme Court judgments, this will give more weightage to our content so that acts as a value addition so that we can fetch good marks, more marks. Then we should talk about the evolution of the Indian constitution so far with the amendments that have been done. So Indian constitution is a living document, living document and it can be amended to meet the changing needs of the society. So that is the meaning of living documents. That's why there is a provision for amendments to suit the prevailing socio-political conditions in India. So how these amendments made the Indian constitution a living document? that we should write by providing good examples or probably mentioning amendments which are very important and crucial. For example, the recent uh, EWS reservation amendment which takes economic criteria also to provide for reservation that is important. Then amendments like provision of reservation for women in Lok Sabha and State Legislative Assembly, reservation for women. So that is also one of the major amendment which ensures representation of women in Lok Sabha and State Legislative Assembly. Then we should talk about amendments like 73rd and 74th constitutional amendment which paved way for participative democracy that is Panchayat Raj institutions and urban local bodies so that we should write. So these amendability and uh, the important amendments. These to address the adaptability of the Indian constitution to the changing needs. So this we should write with significant amendments that amendments that we have discussed so far. So this reflects the evolution of the Indian constitution through various amendments. So that itself is a example for living document or Indian constitution is a living document that we should explain. So after writing about the living document, then we should explain how constitution embodies the aspirations of the all sections of society and the ideals that are reflected in the constitution. So in this part, we should talk about how constitution addresses issues of empowerment and inclusivity. So it provides certain provisions for scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. So it addresses concerns of the SC and STs. Then it has provided provisions for women empowerment then it has provided provisions for weaker sections of society via DPSP that we should write. Then how these provisions, how these provisions ensure social justice that we should write. Along with constitutional provisions, we should also talk about the 
legal provisions or laws made in order to give effect to the constitutional provisions that we should write we should also mention laws and policies which give effect to the or which initiate the provisions that are there in the constitution then after writing that we should explain the role of constitution in nation building how it protects the unity and integrity unity and integrity of the nation by provi with provisions like emergency state emergency national emergency financial emergency and provisions like uh, preventive detention preventive detention then provisions like fundamental duties fundamental duties so that we should write so the role of constitution in nation building so this is the content that we can use to write the essay for the topic that we have discussed so you can add in addition to these content you can add your own content which are reflected in the constitution so you can enhance the essay so before moving to the conclusion we should also talk about the limitations or challenges that are there in ensuring the or in implementing the constitutional provisions so we should dedicate or we should write around 2 to 3 pages with respect to this so how what are the challenges in addressing or in implementing the ideals or principles that are there in the constitution so challenges that are prevailing in society challenges that are there in the politics challenges that are there in the administration so those challenges or limitations we should highlight in the society we have uh, issues like untouchability and uh, class and caste conflict in politics and administration we have issues like uh, corruption so those things we should highlight how these things are posing challenges to the implement challenges in implementing the constitutional principles then after writing those challenges and limitations we should provide solutions to overcome those challenges so after writing this we should move or we should transition to the conclusion writing the conclusion in the conclusion the following dimension or aspect should reflect so the first one is reflection on impact impact of what impact of constitution in shaping the country's governance and societal norms and ensuring democratic values and addressing diverse aspirations so that we should write so then in the second we should write about the enduring legacy of the indian constitution that is emphasizing the constitution's enduring legacy as a living document that uh, continues to embody the aspirations and ideals of the people of india so it adapting to contemporary needs while staying true to its foundational principles that we should address so how uh, this constitution it is providing an enduring legacy enduring legacy to the aspiration of the people of india aspirations of the people of india then we should in the third we should address the call to uphold these values as we have already talked about limitations and challenges in implementing the constitutional provisions so we should also address that dimension by providing call to uphold the values so here we should give call to the all stakeholders of the indian society be it politi politicians be it administrators be it uh, judiciary be it civil society or be it common citizen so we should call everyone to uphold the ideals and principles that are there in the constitution so this is all about answer approach to the essay topic we will meet again in the day 25 question answer approach till then happy learning